So I've made some time-lapse uh, videos of building this. Uh, it's been kind of a quick and dirty version. Uh, I have kind of a Ryobi theme to all of my uh, uh, builds. The uh, tool shed that I have out back with a 600 watt system. Um, I have for my Ryobi uh, uh, lawn tools and some of my uh, woodworking tools. Um, but just wanted to show what this is and how quickly it can be built and really how easy these can be built. Um, so anyway, these are some pass-through extension cords that go to the inverter, and this is how I get power out of the the box. I mainly use the box to more or less keep things dry inside. Uh, I have a USB port on the outside. This is also a meter, and in the middle here, you, when it's actually plugged in, it's not uh, wired currently, it'll give the uh, voltage of the battery when you push this button here. Uh, pretty cool. And uh, they, it's the only meter that I really feel like I need on this. Um, I have a battery disconnect here on the outside. It disconnects the battery from the inverter. Um, and then to open up, today I've been working on the kind of a removable uh, solar panel um, or solar charging system. And there's the USB that's not connected yet. Uh, gray box is the inverter. This is a, a Roarbat 12 volt, 2000 watt inverter that I had left over from our uh, art studio build in our backyard. Um, we moved that system since, uh, since it's a 1200 watt system to a 24 volt system uh, mainly because it's kind of a, a cutoff between 12 volt, what makes sense is a 12 volt system and a 24 volt system um, somewhere around 1000 to 1200 watts and a 12 volt system was a bit small for um, a, a system of that size uh, we have a, an air conditioning um, and heating uh, mini split out there that runs at about a thousand watts. So the other reason is that this particular uh, system kicks on uh, fans for temp protection uh, in the inverter when it hits, I think it's 33% of its max. So that's about 600 to 800 watts. So the fans were coming on and when people are doing art stuff, uh, projects they, they don't want to have the fans running inside there. They're fairly loud. So we moved up to a 24 volt system and we moved up to another Roarbat 4000 watt inverter. I uh, had zero issues with the Roarbat. Uh, this ran the AC just fine. Uh, like I said, the only really problem with it is uh, it wasn't getting as much of the charging out of the uh, uh, 12 volt system wasn't getting as, as much of the charging as it could get out of the, uh, the panels that we had um, with the uh, particular um, charge controller that we had. So we've moved to a 24 volt system and a higher wattage system and now we don't hear the fans anymore because the mini split generally doesn't get above 1100 watts ever so it doesn't kick on the 4000 watt um, fans. So um, makes it quieter in there and it makes everything more efficient. We're actually using more of the uh, solar panels uh, as far as amperage goes. Um, I added this stuff today. This is helped to be removable. This is basically the solar uh, charging port of the portion of the uh, system. Um, you could run this without all this and just charge it up with this Power Queen uh, um, AC to DC charger and uh, charge the battery just fine with that. Um, this is just a system that I can remove quickly to use solar panels. Um, so I'm going to put some dis quick disconnects on this. I've got a fuse. Got it on off from the solar and one of the cheap, uh, uh, I think it's an eBay actually, uh, charge controllers. Um, generally I use Epever for most of my charge controllers for the larger systems, the Tool Shed and the Art Studio. Because they're pretty amazing charge controllers for the price. Um, with cloud monitoring and, uh, and uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. But anyway, inside we got another 100 amp uh, fusible link. For the battery, uh, we have another fuse system there. That is what will go to the USB ports here, over here when it's actually wired. And of course that's the, the disconnect. Um, and this will also possibly go at some point to fans that I will probably mount here and here. My uh, 24 volt um, generator has fans on both sides that are uh, temperature controlled a certain temp inside the box. They kick on and start moving air through. Um, I will probably do the same thing. I have links on some of the uh, um, shorts, I think, that I have posted and videos I have posted to pretty much everything that I use for this. Super cheap. I think it's 300 for the Power Queen battery. I think it was 250 for the inverter. I'm going to say super cheap. 
like I said, depends on what you're doing. Um, and then the all the cabling and whatnot, all that put together probably ran another hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. So, um, but anyway, this is how easy it can be to actually take power wherever you want to go. Um, this has been tested on pretty much every tool I have in my shed, including my uh, rigid table saw. So generally I will test uh, to see what the uh, inrush current does on them and it goes up to 300 watts on inrush, but this particular system runs that just fine. So if you wanted to carry a job saw, a table, a job site table saw out somewhere and use it, um, you'd be able to. Um, runs this shop vac, which has, I don't know, 220 it was showing, I think, uh, amps uh, in rush when it started up. Um, but I haven't found anything that this won't run. Um, it's one of the things uh, about the Roarbat uh, inverters. One of the things you can really uh, mess with your day is, is inverters that uh, kick off to with at a low amperage. Um, these ones have been solid. This particular one has been in our art studio for over a year. Uh, never gave us an issue. The only reason we upgraded was to, to have the fans turn on at a, at a higher wattage. Um, so, and they're pretty, relatively cheap. So one of the things we do videos here for is to let other pe people know what we've, what our experiences have been with uh, different products. And the power cream batteries, same thing. Um, we have two uh, 12 volt, 200 amp batteries out in the uh, art studio. They've been running great. Uh, these are lithium iron phosphate batteries that uh, the one thing about them and I'll probably do another video on that, is uh, we get enough of a freeze here to be careful with them because they can't be charged when it's under freezing. It will uh, change the chemistry of the batteries and basically make them useless uh, almost instantaneously when they start charging if it's under freezing. So you got to keep them warm or in a warm place. Uh, so that's one thing to consider about these. Um, if there's anything else to go over about these, like I said, that's an eBay charge controller. It worked the last time I used it. We'll see if I keep it on here or replace it with something better. Because it's just going to be a mobile system, I'm trying to go as cheap as I can on, on this. Um, I have, this will all be able to be plugged directly into uh, my uh, tool shed as well. So this battery will be able to charge my tool shed as well and be charged from the panels on my tool shed. So I have 600 watts of panels on, those on the tool shed. But anyway, just a quick video to show how easy it is to build one of these. A lot of people are posting videos on how to build these and um, I do it the quick and dirty way I think and uh, it works. It's safe um, but you got to make sure that you understand wiring, um, the gauges of the wiring that you're using, uh, that are, that are, make sure that they're appropriate for the amount of power that you're going to pass through um, the battery to the inverter and uh, what kind of pull the inverter is going to need based on the, uh, the, the tools that you're going to use to power off of it. So. Anyway, that's it. And like I said, I'll be posting more videos. Um, if you're interested in what I'm posting, I'm subscribed. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff this year um, related to solar. We have solar on the house. We have a Ford Lightning to be delivered uh, in a couple weeks. So we'll be posting videos related to that. Uh, we may do the transfer switch to power the house from that. And uh, we also will be doing some raised bed gardening and we already have uh, rank water collection and I'm going to do some solar powered uh, um, irrigation related to that. So uh, we're going to try to take the, uh, the uh, rainwater collection and use that for our garden and uh, just basically taking care of our landscaping. So uh, watch as we, we build all those and see how it works. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you are interested.